Good afternoon, Jelly Arts friends. Where are you? Pop in and let us know. I know I'm two minutes late. I'm always on time. I'm always on time. But I like to mix it up a couple of times and then have internet issues two seconds before we go online to keep it all fresh and fun. All right, let's see where we're at today. Please, if you're logging in, leave me a comment. Let me know where you're viewing us from and welcome. I'm actually really excited for this afternoon. And we do have, hopefully, as it goes, um, as it always goes, we have an issue or so, but the show must go on and we never let that deter us. I'm going to come out live. There we go. Here I am. All right. And let's make sure we're live here. Oh, there's Mansi. One second, I will bring her on. Just leave me a comment. Hi, Mansi. You're muted at the moment. I'll bring you on in two seconds. Are you good? Oh, good. <laughs> okay, I'm getting thumbs up. All right, so I've got Luann and Mansi in the green room. So, yes, as it goes in the world of technology, the internet gods are with you or they like to play with you. So poor Mansi had a little bit of an inter, uh, internet issue um, as she was going live. and um, But she's been able to go to another location. Okay. Hello, Diane. Hello, Kim in Delaware. Henrietta in the Netherlands. Claudia in California. I, too, am coming to you from California. And I, okay, there we go. I can see me live now. Here we go. Don't you love technology? All right. Hello, Gail in Scotland. It always excites me when we get people from other countries here. So we've got a lot going on at Jelly Arts. And now that everybody's jumping in, sorry, we were two minutes late. That's what happens. Um, I'm Tracy Weinzeffel. I am coming to you live from my studio in Southern California. I am the artist coordinator for Jelly Arts. What does that mean? I get to work with a lot of amazing artists and I am super proud of just being part of that team and being part of the company as a whole. I am going to bring on Luann first. Luann is the co-founder, one of the co-founders of Jelly Arts. I will unmute her for a moment. I'm going to bring her on and Luann is going to um, talk about maybe the past 10 years, Luann, do you want to take over here? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tracy, thank you. I have two things I, that are so exciting that I want to talk about today. And one is that it has been 10 years since we started Jelly Arts. So I want to talk a little bit about that because it's just such an incredible milestone for all of us um, that we're still here 10 years later because it was just an idea 10 years ago and now we're this great company that the most wonderful people and we're having some success knock on wood so i want to talk about that for a minute and then after that i do want to talk about um i did a store check <laughs> this week and i went into a michael's store and I found some super fun things. So I just wanted to showcase that a little bit. But let me first just talk about it, how it's been 10 years. And I just wanna do a little reminiscing and I wanna thank a few people. Well, actually a lot of people, but I'm, which is always a little nerve wracking because there are so many people to thank that have been part of our journey. And um, I hope that I'm gonna, uh, mention most of you. If I forgot somebody, uh, please forgive me and know that everybody that has helped us and worked with us over the past 10 years, we love you all. It's been so much fun. Um, so first, I just want to go back and say t about 10 years ago, I went over to Joan's house and Joan Bess showed me how to print on a slab of jello. And I watched her print on this slab of jello. And be, I'm not an artist, but I was a sewer, and I feel like I'm a creative spirit. I watched her print, and then I said, okay, let me try. 
And then she let me try. And then I pulled my very first print and it was with a comb, I remember. And it was with one of my favorite colors, which is in the pink family. And um, I pulled the print and I said to myself, oh my God, if I frame this, I could really put it on my wall. <laughs> I loved it so much. So I love that feeling of that you can make something that you appreciate it. So John and I, that day, we just talked for several hours. And at the end, we said, okay, let's go ahead and try and see if we can create a durable, reusable surface for printmaking. And so that's about 10 years ago. And here we are. So it's, I would say many of us are addicted to gel printing. And when you think about it, it's been such a hectic past 18 months. If you have to be addicted to something, gel printing is a good thing to be addicted to. And it has been therapeutic for me and I hope for many of you to help us through these really difficult times. Um, but, all right, so here I'm gonna go with a list of people to thank. Um, so first of all, I have to thank Joan, and I wish she was here, but I would give her a big hug. But when I see her this summer, I'm going to give her a big hug. So Joan had this great idea, this amazing idea, to turn a slab of jello into a durable, reusable surface. And that was a stroke of genius on her part, I think. She, so, so I want to thank Joan for that and for many other things many other things but for the idea it was a wonderful idea then i want to thank joan's husband john so john you guys don't know but i used to work with john at png in my earlier days and he was my boss and he was an amazing boss and an amazing mentor and even today he serves that role so i have to thank john he's been amazing then I have to thank my family. So my husband, Mark, who think about 10 years of running a business, a startup. And for a couple of those years, I had another job to support, help support us while we were starting this business. So I've been really busy for 10 years. And my husband, Mark, is the most amazing guy. He, he has been super supportive and he always helps me think straight. And he tells me if I'm focused in the right direction or he helps guide my thinking, which is super, super helpful. So to Mark. Um, and then I have a couple of kids who have endured this journey. Um, Joe, who has, thank God, a big guy. He's helped with a lot of the packaging and shipping over the years. And then Hannah, who actually was, I, she served as our first model and she uh, was all over the website. And she was all over the internet as we grew. <laughs> and so for Hannah, we used her image for years and years. And uh, she's been a faithful supporter as well. All right. So after our families, then, oh, my sister Nancy. So when this first started, Nancy, uh, we corralled her into helping us. And she helped us for a couple of years get started on our whole social media platform. She helped create that and guide that and nurture it. And today that is the engine that is driving this business. And it's such a cool thing because we can share all of the fabulous work that everybody's doing on social media. And when we were starting this business, honestly, we didn't really understand the power of that, um, but it's just been incredible. Um, so I wanna thank Nancy. Then I have to thank my girlfriends who from day one believed that we could do this. Uh, I remember working out outside in a park on Saturday mornings and saying, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, what do you think? And they'll, they kept saying, it's going to work, it's going to work. And so that was like 10 years ago. And so I want to thank them. Then I have to thank a friend, Jeff DeBowie, who great friend of ours. He came and he was he's a wonderful photographer. And he took all the images that started the website. So we wouldn't be anywhere without Jeff and his kind heart and his great photography skills to help create a beautiful website that got us all started. Um, and then I have to talk about now all the artists and um, 
So first of all, I have to say thank huge thanks to Tracy. So Tracy, who kicked off this call, Tracy is she's out there every day talking with the, communicating with all the artists who we have artists all over the world and Tracy is managing and coordinating all of that effort so that we can share it with you in a way that makes sense. So to Tracy, I wish we were close um, and we could celebrate in person, but someday we will do that Tracy. All right. Then we have these, our brand ambassadors. So we have Bertie Coopson and Marsha Vock and Tanya Ahmed. And those three, oh my gosh, we love you guys. And we, I don't even know what to say. You guys are the rock. You are, you're, you are rock stars. This came up in a, a video, in a call the other day. You're all pr gel printing rock stars. And um, we're just super lucky to have met you. And then to have now be working with you for several years and we hope for many years into the future so please don't book anything else because jelly we we need you here um so our brand ambassadors are, we love you um and then we've had artist team members over these years we've had so many and honestly they've been amazing and they have taught us so much and to all of you you are always part of the Jelly family. And whether you like it or not, you're part of our team. So we have all, and let me just say this, Tracy, we have to post all the links um, to all the artists in their pages, because I don't know if people, they have to see the incredible work that they do. I mean, these artists are incredible just incredible. So if you have a half an hour one day, you should click through each one of our artists' links and check out what they're doing. They teach us things every month, new things every month. Um, and then I have to thank our Jelly employees. <laughs> so we have Jason, who is our customer service manager, who sits over there. And um, he is the kindest person. He talks to everybody who calls. He's um, he responds to everybody online. He ships the daily orders and um, he deals with our fulfillment house. So he keeps the whole thing churning. And so Jason, big thanks to Jason. Then we have Madison, who's, I think you met, we, yes, Madison was on Jelly Telly last month. And so Madison, amazing. She's amazing on social media. She's just a little brainchild when it comes to social media. And man, we, de we depend on her every day. <laughs> to be young and experienced in social media, it's, I, I'm jealous of that, honestly. Um, so thanks to her. Then we have Liv Potter, who comes in and she constructs everything for us. So man, what would we do without Liv? Thank you, Liv. Um, and then Jess, Jess, uh, Jess is our designer. She designs all of our packaging. So she does an amazing job and she, uh, she squeezes us in when she can and she always gets the job done for us and we always love what she does. So I think I'll stop there because it could go on and on and on. But actually you're gonna meet another person I haven't mentioned because you're gonna meet her in a few minutes, but Nancy, who is joining us, is part of our team and uh, she's just such a gifted artist and also, what I love about Nancy, another thing, is that she is the most organized person. <laughs> I love, I love, I love. She makes my job so easy. And I count on that now. <laughs> so she better keep that up. So Nancy, I just love you for the all for everything, for your art and for your just everything. Thank you for being part of our team. So okay. Man. So I just want to read what? a cup. Sorry to interrupt, but I do want to read some comments okay. because um, quite okay. a few people were commenting. First off, kudos to you. And I can just, I don't know. Kudos to being able to work with you, work, work for you. I don't know. Uh, and just to see you read this has just made my day. So thank you for that. Um, also, let's, can I read a few comments? Just a couple comments. Um, Robin said, hi, Luann. I met you at National, National Teachers Conference about six years, purchased a bunch of supplies for my youth program, and we have been hooked ever since. Youth, are, in, youth Art 
Institute of Baltimore Robin. Thank you. That was, I love that. And Henrietta wanted to say, oh, that's a big shout out to Tracy. I don't need that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, everybody <laughs> is basically saying happy 10 years. And also thank you for you and agreeing that jelly arts and jelly printing has been very, very therapeutic and help them. So I wanted to make sure that you know you're being recognized for all the words that you are saying right now. And Madison, oh, I did forget you. to mention, is behind the scenes now. She is, um, she's the one who's typing from Jelly Arts. So I, I do want to say thanks, Madison. I think I missed introducing you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So big thanks to everybody. And we'll be celebrating for a few months because how often do you reach 10 year mark? It's a big deal. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to share, which I think you guys are gonna find really fun, is I did a store check yesterday, or the day before, and I went into Michael's, and in the Michael's store, there's this <laughs> whole aisle about card making, and, and also that's where our gel plates are. So if you go in, you can find us in the card area, um, but if you just take a look in that card area, it's got so many fun things. And most of them you can use with gel, with our Jelly Arts gel training plate, which is what I thought was so fun. So I bought a bunch of stuff yesterday. I've already shipped it to a, uh, a couple of our artists. So you'll be seeing those items when they do their classes in the future. But I just wanted to show you a few things. But so now, and I hadn't seen these before, but these are little, they're packs of cardstock cut to the similar shapes as the sizes of our plates. So how simple is that? We love printing with cardstock. So now you can just buy the size of cardstock that you need to make your prints. And they have several other sizes. So these are just a few of them, but I just thought how cool um, that it's so simple that they have now these sizes. And then I just have one because I've shipped out all the other cards, but they have so many different sizes of blank cards to print on. And this is just one. I think this is a five by seven. So it's perfect for printing with our five by seven plate, but they probably had six other card sizes that you can use with our three by five plate, um, with our five by five plate, with, are five by seven and six by six. So these cards are just, they're ideal for printing with on our plates. And if you've made too many cards, you can always put the cards together and make a journal. <laughs> so you can never have too many cards because you can turn them into journals. So I just wanted to tell you that, that if you go into the Michaels, uh, into their card printing area or aisle, you're gonna find tons of things there that are gonna be perfect for printing on our Jelly Arts plates. So I just wanted to say that, it was so much fun. I didn't have enough time to, you know, in the aisle yesterday, I wanted to stay there and keep uh, shopping. So I wanted to say that. So Tracy, is it time? It is time. Drum roll. <laughs> okay. So first off, um, a lot of comments. Um, I'm thrilled to have found all these wonderful people, uh, artists, Tracy, Jelly Arts, others so inspiring. Uh, uh, Cindy said, love Jelly Arts and all of the artists. And Loretta said, I almost bought those items from Michaels, but wasn't sure how good they would be with paints. Yes, they will be. Okay. And I'm actually going to go and do a Jelly Arts find um, tomorrow and stop in and get those for my future demos. So, okay. Yes, perfect. So without further ado, and I do want to say thank you to Mansi. I'm going to be bringing her on screen. She was supposed to be coming live from her, ho her home, but she decided to come to us live from a remote location, which I love. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me see if I can add her in. And make sure you are <laughs> unmuted, Mansi. Can we hear you? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay, can I just say, uh, first off, I'm happy to see your smiling face. Um, I, I um, second everything that Luann said. But uh, we were about two minutes before going online as it goes. Poor Mansi said they cut the cord to her internet. 
she has a beautiful redone home and a really beautiful studio. So what I'm going to ask Mansi to do on her own, maybe some little time, is to record your studio so we can see it. Because I know she said sure. she was going to bring it to us. So Mansi, <laughs> welcome and tell us about yourself. We want to know about you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm trying to figure out how yep. to adjust this um, iPad. So this kind of threw me off completely because I actually spent time cleaning up my um, studio yesterday and I um, had a surface that you could see. I had all my gel plates stacked up because I wanted to share how I stored them. I had my journals decorated with the backdrop so you would see all my beautiful jelly arts work. And sure enough, um, at 11.48, I texted Luann and said, the internet is busted. <laughs> and we have brick walls, so 5G does not work well inside our house. So I'm standing outside with my phone up in the sky trying to get a signal. And then I texted my neighbors and they're like, we'll put our router outside and try connecting to our internet, which I tried. That didn't work. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just running over. So I'm at my neighbor's house sitting in their living room and I grabbed whatever journals I could grab as I was running out to share. But I promise a proper studio tour. I'm also doing the Facebook Live next week. Oh, so I will share some of my storage tips then. So um, hopefully our Internet is going to be back up and running by then. AT&T will come out and fix the cable and everything will run smoothly. But uh, so you won't miss out on a studio tour. It's going to happen. It's just not happening today. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. We love it. We love it. I'm happy to see you. So, Mansi, um, I'd love for you to share a little bit about you as an artist, how you started, maybe whereabouts you live. So, if you don't follow Mansi, I'm going to say really on Instagram, she does tell a beautiful story of her life, her kids, her studio, her family, and food, <laughs> and oh, flowers too. <laughs> So take it away. Um, so first things first, whatever I, uh, whenever I start anywhere, I introduce myself and I make people repeat my name because almost everybody gets it wrong. And uh, it's Monsi. So you just have to say Ma, Mon, and then C. It's okay. Monsi. <laughs> okay. Got it. So there's a big social media post I did on this. It's Monsi. You just have to say it out. You have to open your mouth wide, wider. <laughs> if you can, and then you'll get it right. So um, I'm Monsi, and I had always wanted to be a watercolor artist, and I had wanted to go to art school. I went for an interview when I was 19 uh, to one of the most prestigious institutions in India. I, um, so there were a series of uh, tests that we had to do to qualify for the interview. I passed all the tests, got through to the interview, and the interview panel was these uh, very accomplished artists in India. There were six of them. I was 19 and very nervous. And I was told when they saw my portfolio, which had my poetry and my art, that I was a much stronger writer than I was an artist and that I would fail as an artist and I should focus on my writing. And that uh, completely shattered my soul. So that was the last day I painted. And I was like, you know what? These people know what they're talking about. They've seen the world. How could they be wrong, right? So that's kind of where my career path, the trajectory changed. My parents were very, very supportive. And they let me uh, come here, get my master's in journalism. Oh. And thus started a career in marketing and communications. And for about 15 years, wow. I was a marketing and communications professional. My passion uh, lay in health. So I went in for health journalism, ended uh, up working for uh, Palo Alto Medical Foundation, which is a big, uh, it's part of the Sutter Health Network over here. And philanthropy has always been close to my heart. So it was perfect that I was being able to chair the communications task force for philanthropy in a health setting and helping doctors and nurses get funding for all the things that they needed. And then I became pregnant. And <laughs> this was after about 15 years of saying, I don't want to have any kids. We've been married for a while. And uh, I was like, you know, I just want to travel and I just want to see the world and you know, going to South Africa on a whim or, you know, going to Switzerland just for the weekend kind of thing. We had done that for about 15 years. And then we decided, you know what, I, it's time to have a child of our own because we loved playing with kids and I loved interacting with kids and holding workshops for them. Uh, and I would just do this on the side, like just play with colors because I loved colors, but I didn't have 
the guts to pick up a paintbrush again. So I got pregnant. I decided to quit my job because I was like, I'm only going to have this time for myself just for these next months, couple of months. And then, you know, when the little one comes, my life is gone. That's how I felt at that time. <laughs> and <laughs> so she was born and sure enough, she had all the allergies in the world. So, which were discovered at seven months of age. So she was basically stuck on me, had to carry her everywhere. We couldn't go to the park, couldn't go to the bookstore, couldn't go to the library, didn't have play dates. So that lasted for about two years. I was in a very, very dark place. And that's kind of when art found me, I think. It was, I had bought her these tempera paints and we were painting, doing finger painting and getting messy out on the deck. And I had um, some canvas and I just started doing finger painting with her. And, a flower bouquet emerged and I'm like, I guess I could do this. I don't have to pick up the paintbrush. And fluid acrylics was like the big thing at that time. So I went and bought all of these very expensive golden fluid acrylics bottles, which, you know, I didn't know what to do anything with. And I got Liquitex pouring medium and I started buying canvases and I was hooked just pouring stuff. I was pouring on everything at that time wood <laughs> tiles, whatever. And I asked our neighbors on next door for donations and I ended up with half my garage full of excess extra tiles that people have from remodeling projects. So I was just like, <coughs> making art on tiles and you know, just trying out new techniques. It was free substrates for me. And then what I did was uh, my daughter Mira and I would go out for walks and we would just place those tiles around the neighborhood as free art. And uh, it got covered in the newspaper and, and these people came and they're like, so you're an artist, tell us more. And I'm going, I don't know, <laughs> I'm just kind of pouring paint. And uh, that's kind of where Mansi Makes began is uh, people in the community found out about what I was doing and they asked for, my first commission was for a sign uh, somebody wanted in the shape of a heart for their door, for their front door mm. with their initials on it. And, you know, word kind of, word. It was, it was all just word of mouth. Then I was painting custom pumpkins for Halloween and Christmas trees and things like that. And then I started dabbling in alcohol inks and that's when I found Birhit. So uh, I was doing alcohol inks and I was doing resin. I realized it was very, very, uh, the fumes were toxic. I was doing it inside the guest bathroom, locked inside the, you know, because I didn't want Mira getting exposed to it. So guest bathroom at night, you know, breathing in all that toxic stuff and didn't know any better. Realized I was getting sick. I started getting hives all over my body. Went to get a checkup and they're like, well, you're working with resin and you have no protective gear on. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should have researched the medium. And while I was doing the alcohol ink stuff, I chanced across their hits alcohol ink play on the gel plate. And I'm like, what's the gel plate? What in the world is that? So again, it didn't involve picking up uh, my paintbrush. And so there was no, um, oh. that, that thing, that, that hesitation I had from, you know, I cannot pick up the paintbrush because I am not an artist. They have told me I cannot be an artist. I will not pick up the paintbrush. I'm just going to do what brings me joy through color without picking up the paintbrush. So the gel plate was perfect for that because there was no paintbrush involved. I could just have a brayer and just kind of do my thing. And one thing led to another and I did some craft shows, got invited to the farmer's market and suddenly I had started doing gel plate printing and I was doing workshops for kids. Mira was in preschool. She was past her allergies. She was now four years old. And I started leading gel plate workshops. And that was when in May of 2019, actually exactly three years ago, two years ago, it was May 21st. I looked up my emails, May 21st, 2019, when I first emailed Luann and I said, I am um, working with the gel plate and I'm doing summer workshops for kids in my daughter's preschool. And I don't know how I can buy bulk quantities because I would like to give these kids gel plates as gifts after the summer workshop ends and she was like we'll set you up with a wholesaler account let, just let me know uh, what your reseller id is and i'm like what in the world's name is a reseller's id <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so that's kind of when things got formalized i got a seller's permit and um, i did the summer workshops out on the deck and it was just so therapeutic and the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds were so creative uh, i did the mommy and me workshop the adults were mostly trying to get it right, trying to get, you know, the perfect color combinations. The kids were just playing. And that, you know, that's what I do. I, I haven't learned art. I have just kind of followed my heart and I have always leaned into my intuition. And most times I cannot explain 
why I picked the color choices I picked, why I write the numbers I do in my journals. It's mostly after the fact I, I write something and then I'll like Mira will come in and she'd say, why did you, why did you write 412? And I'm going, I don't know, let's look it up and I'll do um, a Google search. What does 412 mean? And apparently it's some kind of angel number telling me to make the most of what I have. And I'm like, okay, you know, so that's how kind of things work for me. It's very, very, and mm -hmm. some people find that very woo woo, but I just feel like the universe gives to you what you give to it and if you put an ask out there if you express with your heart something and you're really honest about it and authentic it will come to you karma is a real thing yeah. it 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 really i truly believe in that i'm not a religious person i don't you know do idol worship but that's something i believe in that karma really does work well, the other thing so that, that was a very, very long story of how I started. Uh, and then Tracy emailed it me. It was so August good. 2019. And she's like, you, know, you made this scarf and I saw it on Instagram yep. and we would like to buy that scarf from you. And I'm going, I didn't make it to sell, but sure, I'll mail it to you. And then she asked, hey, we're opening up this thing for our artists um, team. And would you like to apply? And I said, what does that entail? And she said, well, we just need a headshot and a bio. And I'm going, OK, I can do that. <laughs> and so, before I knew it, we were having Zoom calls with Gerhit and Marsha and Tanya, who are like my heroes. I still uh, get inspired by them daily, but to know that I have a direct way of communicating with them, like these people that I have always worshipped and they are real and they are so helpful. It's like to be on the same email thread with Gerhit and Marsha and Tanya for me was like, wow, you know, I've made it. <laughs> So I do, I want to say something like I picked out so many things from that. First off, even though somebody steered you in that wrong direction and you can't do something, first off, um, you went on a different path that quite honestly has led you to the person who you are and you gathered skill set to run that business that you didn't even know was going to exist in your future. True. I, too, heard something similar and have a degree in building construction management. And it was kind of said to me that get a real career. Well, art is a real career. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everything that you said has happened organically for you. And I see that in yeah. your art. Your art is incredibly organic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just mm -hmm. from my perspective. Mm -hmm. But you, I have to I say, say things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a really good lesson for anybody listening because it kind of happened to me too. I was told I couldn't study. I wanted to study design, so I had to go into medicine instead. And you know what? I think today, hopefully young people, hopefully we can inspire them. to By listening to us, you can say, have the courage to do it. I mean, I was also, Nancy, I... Monsi, I have to say that correctly. <laughs> I'm not even that it. It's so bad. Hey, in it. our defense, oh, Luann and I are from Michigan. We pronounce everything wrong. <laughs> That's totally fine. <laughs> all right, Monsi. All right. So I think hopefully we can save a few of the young people who are told no to have the courage to do it. Honestly, when I look back and I've had a wonderful life and I have no regrets, but I do wish I had said no. But it was very hard to say no to my parents, right? It's very hard to say no to people that you love and who are have, have your best interest at heart. Excuse me, I have to take this call. No. <laughs> um, so I hope yeah, I, I don't know. I just wish, I just wish that some young people are hear this and have the courage to do it, mm -hmm. and then write us and tell us that they did. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. I just, it's, it's hard. That I mean, we know amazing. how hard it, it is. It is very hard. Because it is very hard to go against because you know, coming from India, it's uh, if you have the brains and if your parents have the ability to send you to a good school, the expectation is you would either be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. And I yeah. had the brains, I had the smarts, I had the privilege of going mm -hmm. to a convent education. Like I got a convent education. I had nuns teaching us British English. So I'm like a, a grammar Nazi, yeah. but <laughs> so, you know, you have that opportunity and you have been given that privilege, then why wouldn't you take advantage of that right. to do something more? Right. 
And I just feel that's kind of where I had to have those conversations with my parents and in a way help them understand that I will do good in this world. I will end up making this world better. I will make a difference. I just won't do it following this route. I don't have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer to make a difference in this world. And I truly, in this journey, the last two years, especially with uh, the gel plate printing and doing YouTube videos and doing the Facebook lives, and um, mm -hmm. I started this online course uh, where people can join and take my classes. The emails that I get, the comments that I have received, people are in so much darkness and just giving themselves the permission to fail at art mm -hmm. is all they need because mm -hmm. there's no failure in art. Right. You know, everything you touch is so unique to you. And especially with a gel plate, mm -hmm. there is, there are no mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's such a forgiving tool. You can do amazing things, just expressing yourself through that. And I feel for, for mm -hmm. just, just for therapy sake. Yeah. I, every time I right. massage that paper on the gel plate, it's like instant therapy. It's, it just calms me down. My breathing becomes even just the act of doing that. And I think people just need to give themselves, especially as women, you know, we get burdened by so many shoulds by society, you know, should do this, should be right. this. I just feel mm -hmm. like this allows, art allows you, it does for me, it allows me to be myself, to be who I am, to be true, and to give myself the grace and the forgiveness that I want to share with others. Oh. You know, it's, it's, that's what it's for, for me, that's what it does. So I cannot thank you, wow. Luann and Joan, enough for the gel plate. It's, you know, it's such such a therap therapeutic tool. Really, it's not just it's not it's not just art. It's so much more than that. It is. And I would say this, Monty. I it is for me too. So I totally get it. And the other thing about being therapeutic, for me. I look forward to the next time that I can do it. And I don't have a lot of time to do it because I'm very busy around here. And so when I'm out and I buy things, like I'll show you, I just bought these. Oh, oh can nice. you see you got the oh. Yay. Wait, I don't know if you can see it. Right Sorry. There. Hold it right there. Very good. Oh, I've not done this. I can't wait to do it. So <laughs> how fun is that? When I think about therapy, I think, I am looking forward to do it, to playing with these. And I, I'm trying to think, when am I going to have time to do it? I'm you going to do it this week sometime. And honestly, I'm looking forward to it. So I think looking forward to something is really yes. therapeutic too. Well, so you, you said something. It's not getting, finding that it's making the time. It's saying I need, okay, from Friday from nine to nine 30, I call it my morning meditation. I'm going to pull and just mm -hmm. set a time. Even if it's just yep. 20 minutes, that will make an impact mm -hmm. on your whole day. And I, I, I see so this I so want often. To share something that Tanya told me. So Tanya got me onto this. Um, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to make you the, mm -hmm. there we go. So Tanya got me into this disc binding, um, Thing. So what it is, it's these are just discs and I just punch. And uh, mm -hmm. she had put a post on Instagram and I was like, what in the world is this? Because you can add pages, you can take pages out, you can work on them. So this is what mm -hmm. I've been doing. I've just been, and I wish I could have grabbed more, but I have more, which I will share next week when I do my Facebook live, but just buy some discs, punch some holes, have some loose sheets mm -hmm. of paper. Some of them can be blank. Some of them can have portraits. Uh, like I do, but this is what I do. I just take 10 minutes and I do something in 10 minutes. That's all it is. 10 minutes every day of gel plate printing. And this is just a portrait transfer journal, but you can have anything. You can even do something with leaves like I did in this one, the accordion journal. So you could have oh, some kind of, you know, you can this. write words. You can, you can do something fun in just 10 minutes. Mm. That just this one doesn't have any words. It's just something that I did with color mm -hmm. pencils, accentuating accentuating the gel plate prints. Mm -hmm. But ten minutes, just allow yourself mm -hmm. ten minutes, and you do it yeah. for long enough. You do it for twenty one days, it becomes a habit, and then you can't right. do without those ten minutes. You know, and ten minutes is not a lot mm -hmm. to ask to give yourself. Ten minutes is not a lot yep. of time to make for you. You are that wow. important. You can take ten minutes mm -hmm. for yourself every day. She's okay. Right. You're right. 
I want to welcome people too to ask questions, but I do have like uh, I'm going to ask you kind of a speed round of questions so I okay. get information. Okay, so I'm going to you get to name. I'll do two or three, but two or okay. three of your favorite color combinations. Like, okay, I'm just starting. I have ten minutes. What are you going to grab? Um, as far as colors go. In all honesty, I have a wall like Tracy's now, except my paints are hanging on the pegboard. <laughs> and I will be truly honest, I am not making this up. I turn around to the wall and the first three colors I see, I grab them off. That's what I've been doing. I cannot do the color wheel. Oh. And I will tell you that yesterday, last night, I turned around, I saw pink, orange, and white. I just picked them off the shelf. And then I turned around one more time because I was like, you know, I need one color that is not kind of similar. And I looked around. First thing my eye landed on was a color shift green, a lime green. Never mm. in my life would <laughs> I have chosen that combination. And I will share on social media tomorrow when I finish that page what that looks like. But yeah, so I don't. To, I don't have top three colors. I just turn around. And sometimes okay. if you if you can't turn around and do that, close your eyes, pick out paints from your drawer. Just do that. Allow yourself that freedom again to explore. Oh my God. I don't know if I can do that. No. <laughs> it's okay. just paper, Tracy. You, it's your mantra. It's just oh, it is my mantra. It's just a piece of paper. I always say to people, it's just a piece of paper. And if it really goes south, I'll mail you a piece of paper. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. So what advice can you give to somebody who is just starting never picked up um, a jelly plate, doesn't, you know, hasn't, it doesn't have a break. Like, what's your advice? Where are you going to start? My advice is going to go counter to every single person's advice out there, which is to not watch YouTube videos when you're starting out. When you're starting out, <gasps> my advice really? is play. <laughs> Just play. Play. Play with the gel plate. Put on too much paint. Put on too little paint. Make mistakes. Keep those sheets. Nothing is lost when you're doing that. And do it for a week. Do it for two weeks. You know, do it two or three times, depending on, you know, take out the gel plate. You will get frustrated, yes. But you will also teach yourself what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And after you've initiated yourself into gel plate printing by yourself, go and watch Birhit, go and watch Marsha, go and watch Tanya on the Jelly Arts blog and the Jelly Arts YouTube channel. And then, you know, focus in on techniques, focus in on colors. But at first, I think, and I do that with mediums too, if I'm not familiar with a medium, I buy everything. I have, I have a full set syndrome and I have exploring medium sen syndrome. So I buy, if I see Tracy using a medium I've never used before, I'll buy it. Because I'm like, what the hell is crackle paste? Okay, I'm going to buy that. <laughs> and my thing with my problem, this is really a problem. I don't look it up. So I don't know if it's okay to use my fingers or not, but I will just put my fingers in and I'll just start spreading it on my journal page. And that's how I get a feel for things. So that's what I would encourage you to do. Oh my God. I love Am it. Am I frozen? Well, you are, but I you'll come back. It'll, it'll come back. It'll catch up. I think Other, otherwise you look really cute. So I'm okay. <laughs> but if not, if not, we'll make it work. Um, they can still hear you clearly, I think. So. Okay. And you are getting, um, and I, I want to say, Lisa with two S's really, um, and you covered on this, playing is a learning process for adults, not for children. So what child ever picks up the instructions and reads the instructions? So you kind of hit on Exactly. That. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, is there, name your go-to most used or recommended plate size. You only get to pick two, three, two. Five. <laughs> Five by seven and eight by ten. Okay. Those are my biggest ones. So usually people don't use the eight by ten. I like it because what I do is I use my um, deli paper on the eight by ten. And then I'm able to trim that into whatever sizes I want to make multiple cards from one print. And I also do that for my journals. So I'm able to trim that to size and I can um, use a puncher and I can punch shapes out. I can die cut. And it's amazing to see when you have printed one whole piece on an 8x10 and then you cut it up into these smaller pieces. The story that unfolds with those smaller pieces is so different 
from the one that unfolds just looking at that big piece. Wow. And the five by seven, because I do a lot of cards. And you're getting lots of people who are saying, learn by playing. I like that. Um, Claudia said, I'm a medium junkie. <laughs> I love that. Medium junkies unite. I love that. I always say too, but when people like say they buy stuff, I'm like, use it, use it. When you buy it, use yes. it. Don't store it, use it. Okay. Um, what are you, what do you have currently going on? Do you have workshops? Where can people connect with you? You mentioned your website. So, yeah, my website is monsimakes.com and I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Same handle, Monsi Makes. Oh. And it's Monsi Makes for a reason because I don't know what I'll be making next. I <laughs> might go into cooking, so I might start doing embroidery. I might start doing quilting. Who knows? So that's why I kind of kept it open-ended as Monsi makes because I like to work with my hands. And um, what I'm working on right now is a number of different projects for Michaels and Jelly Arts for uh, Graphics, which is another company I love working with uh, in conjunction with Jelly Arts. So those are the two uh, things that I'm working on right now. I also do some guest designing for card companies where I will do watercoloring. So I did pick up the paintbrush again last year and it was mostly because I got the confidence from being um, noted as a person who was being authentic. And um, I keep telling people to not be afraid. And if they can't not be afraid, yeah. then to do it afraid. Yep. And I felt that I was not oh, doing it afraid with my watercolors. I was, I was holding back and I just needed to pick up the paintbrush and I needed to do it afraid. And that's what I've been doing since last year. So I have picked up my watercolors again, and I don't know why I denied myself that joy all these years, but I'm glad that I picked it up again and I'm doing it. You are amazing. I will say that. I watch you for Thank inspiration. You. So, Okay, um, any, any questions that you would like, and you're getting lots of good for you, same here, fantastic, love this. You guys are motivating. I love this because you know you also realize these are three women here who own businesses. So I love that. Uh, Absolutely. And that's one thing that drew me to Jelly Arts. And I told Luann in an email end of last year that 2021 onwards, I'm going to be more um, focused and more uh, deliberate in my choices of who I support and who I work with. And women owned businesses is my number one priority because I think all of us need a lot of cheerleading, a lot of women supporting women. There's a lot of people in the industry who um, focus more on competition. And I think that only does everybody yeah. harm. It has to be community over competition. It has to be women supporting women. It has to be artists lifting other artists up. Oh. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of the mission I'm on. Oh my God. Well, girls. I cannot believe it. First off, I um, I remember about a year ago, oh, wow. we year or so ago, and COVID happened and whatnot. We asked Luann about doing Facebook Lives, and Luann was like, "Run with the idea." Not only did she say "run with the idea," and she didn't really like to be in front of the camera, she got in front of the camera. <laughs> so today was amazing. Um, and I do want to say that Monsi will be on live next Wednesday at noon. The 26th. She, yep, the 26th. And she is doing our next Facebook Live. Um, do you have an I Should I ask, do you have an idea of what you're going to be doing or should I not? <laughs> no, that's fine. So people can come prepared. It's actually good because we will be making cards and I will actually show you how to use your 8x10 plate and how to use your deli paper to make cards because a lot of people use deli paper just for collages or for scrapbooking or for art journaling, not for making cards. And the other thing I want to do is also show you how to use your brier sheets, because I've seen in many comments that people discard their brier sheets. And I just want to encourage you to bring with you any puncher you have, any kind of, doesn't have to be any pattern. It could even be like a, a circle puncher, a square puncher, any of those. And we're just going to punch some shapes out and see how we can make cards with that. Oh, my God. Okay, wonderful. Um, the other thing is we will post where to find Monsi on Instagram. I say I, I follow you a lot on Instagram because I love your reels and your, or your stories. I love the stories. 
So, and occasionally I'll be there's in bed. a lot of food stories. So people, so people I know like occasionally I'll be stories. in bed and I'll be like, what is she making? Now, first off, I can't cook. So <laughs> the other thing is she does live in California. So I know that in my path of travels, I want to be able to meet her and see her studio. So that those yes, are my and goals. Luan, I actually have a request uh, for Luann for this. I really want to be able to have a girl's night out or a girl's day out with Burhit, Marsha, Tanya, Tracy, and you. That's kind of like my, it's on my bucket list of things. Like, I want to do that before I die. That's one thing I want to really do. Okay, hold it down. I'll work on it. <laughs> so we Thank did have you. one question, Mary, or I, I, and sorry if I miss questions, they scroll quickly. Um, if you do have a question and I missed it, you can do, um, send an email to info at jellyarts.com. Is that correct, um, Luann? Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, Mary did want to ask, what do you use for a brayer sheet? Typically, I will just say a lot of times, and for myself, I use a spare piece of copy paper. So, Monsi, can you answer that? And then we'll leave it at that because n next week you're going to show them what to do with that, those extra sheets. Yes. I just, so I have this huge roll from Michael's of regular paper, just white paper. They come in rolls. And I usually spread that roll out on my table when I'm working, Me too. especially when I do the overhead videos. And I'll just brayer on so that I don't have to worry about getting my table dirty. And when I tear that paper off, I just save it and then I reuse it for the next. Ooh. And then I just keep building layers on that. So that becomes like this beautiful. I've actually also used that as wrapping paper on occasion because it's just so beautiful by itself. Oh my God. <laughs> she's got so many great ideas <laughs> I, literally, I use i use a piece of white paper too but i use like somebody gave me some like discarded like printer paper it's pretty thick so i can wipe it off actually but i never even thought about getting um uh just the inexpensive butcher type paper that's a great idea yeah it's just the butcher yeah. paper i yeah. buy that for my daughter for her art art stuff you know because she goes through so much paper mm -hmm. all the time we just buy rolls of paper now, Monsi, you have a yes. discount code, right? Yes, it's Monsi B. M A N S I B, correct? Yes. Okay, um, I'm going to put that in there for Carol. Okay, I'm going to let Monsi and Luann go and thank you from the bottom of my heart for this opportunity. First off, I just absolutely love engaging with you guys. And second off, uh, next week we do have Facebook Live. Our calendar is listed on our blog. First off, why don't I let you guys go and then I'll do some cleanup. Uh, any parting words okay. from both of you? I just oh, want to geez. thank Luann and you, Tracy, for this opportunity yeah. and just for being part of Jelly Arts. It's the highlight of my days and my life. I really, really appreciate it. And I wouldn't be where I am without you. I love it. And Luann, oh, that's so sweet. I don't have anything to say about it. That was wonderful. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to leave. It's, um, it's, it's, I will say this. This has been such a joy for me for 10 years. I mean, I will. I have to read this one saying. If you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to things. And I just want to say that my life in the past 10 years has been super fun. It's been full of joy, and I think it's because I've had a goal of bringing jelly to everybody, and and then think about all the wonderful people that I've met along the way, including you two. I mean, that is like the best thing in the world. So I've been on an incredible journey, and honestly, I don't want to get off. It's just beginning. <laughs> it's been really. It's just it's beginning. It's been so fun. Yeah. Anyways, that's it. Okay, Bye, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye to you. I'm going to stay here real quick. I'm going to stay here real quick just to mention a few pieces of housekeeping. We list our events um, on our blog. So um, Madison just gave that. She's really good about updating it. We do free. Monsi does uh, Birgit and Marsha. Tanya, they do classes with Michaels and demos for them. So those are free. Those are added to the calendar. Um, Fran, uh, I think it was Francine. Monsi uses her art to help others. I purchased cards from her last year. Lovely. I saw that as well. If you're using art for good, I love that. A lot of people ask, what do we do with the extra this? Make stuff and auction it off. Sell it. 
donate money. I love that. Okay, so um, I will bring this to a close, and I want to thank all of you guys. By the way, um, as Luann said, 10 years isn't possible if you guys aren't part of that. 10 years is not possible. 10 more years isn't part possible unless you're all part of that. And I thank you guys for tuning in. We'll, we're going to take, I think our next Jelly Telly will be June 30th. We've got a little bit of a gap in between for vacations and whatnot. But we're going to keep doing these because you guys have said it means a lot to you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send us an email at info at uh, jellyarts.com. And this video will stay live in our Facebook group. Make sure you tune in next week for Monsi because I do want you to see her studio and her art um, techniques. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you all soon.